This episode of Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. Well, it's Mechanics Month on Make Online. Makes sense, right? Mechanics show. And our next guest um, is um, Dustin Roberts. She couldn't be here tonight, so we caught up with her last weekend and um, wanted to share a project with her from her new book, Making Things Move. She's a, a mechanical engineer and a professor at NYU's Interactive Telecommunications program. So let's take a look. Hey, so I'm here with Dustin. Dustin brought her wind lantern, and uh, let's talk about it. What does this thing do? So this wind lantern is designed to take wind energy from the spinning when it catches in the blades here. It's attached to a motor, and when you give motion to a motor, it will give you electricity out. So if you spin it fast enough, you can see the LEDs light up down here. That's and so that's neat. the wind lantern. So like this is a project from your book. It's kind of like late in the book. So it, I mean, it, it's one of these projects that brings it all together. Can you tell me mm -hmm. about like the different elements of uh, mechanical motion going on? Sure. Well, this is kind of to demonstrate that you don't need a whole shop full of tools to make something pretty fun. And these, all these clear acrylic pieces are laser cut, and the rest of the parts are all off the shelf from McMaster. And you can see from the motor, there's a gear that attaches or kind of talks to a gear of the same size to transfer the motion from the central axis. And then the wires come out from the motor down to the breadboard here. But in the meantime, to handle the weight of this, uh, this thing on top, you've got shaft collars holding everything in place and uh, thrust bearing down at the bottom that takes the weight of this but still allows it to spin without a lot of friction. Ah, so that's why you wouldn't mount the, this straight to the motor shaft. Right, right. The weight of the spinning. Yeah, it's um, normally easier to kind of talk with motors indirectly so you don't have to worry about um, spinning them directly. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier to, uh, uh, there's no advantage here, but you could make this one smaller, for example, and make this one bigger, so you'd get more kind of mechanical advantage out of this system. What is mechanical advantage? Uh, mechanical advantage is kind of when you trade something for something. So if I had a small gear here that was, say, half the size of this, I would get twice the amount of output power from this thing spinning. Or if I had, uh, if it was going the other way and I had a motor actually working as a motor, not a generator here, um, a, a gear ratio, like small gear on the motor to talking to a bigger gear mm -hmm. will make the motor two times more torquey, or two, two times easier to uh, go up a hill or turn something that you needed a lot of strength for. Right. So you trade uh, extra spins for extra strength. And in this of. case, it's just one to one because mm -hmm. the gears are the same size? Exactly, exactly one to one. And then, so the motor then delivers power to the breadboard, but what's the circuit you've got going on here? So what's going on here is that this is a stepper motor that has two kind of separate coils of wire. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to make sure of is that even though this is designed to catch the wind this way and make it spin this way, the wind around New York City is kind of crazy and sometimes it will even catch it and go the wrong way. I wanted to make sure I didn't break LEDs or anything and always make the current flow the same direction. Mm. So to do that, you can use a bunch of uh, these diodes which only allow current to flow in one direction before they get to the LEDs. So no matter which way it's spinning, I'm getting the energy created from both coils of the stepper motor and driving it into the LEDs in the same direction all the time. What are the capacitors doing? Oh, they're decoupling mm -hmm. the power? Um, I guess you can call it, well, it's more like smoothing. If you take the capacitors out, um, it's probably hard to see it in this light, but if you take the capacitors out and I spin it, it uh, the lights flicker a lot because they go on and off because you're only getting the power from exactly when I'm spinning it. If you put the capacitors in, they store a little bit of the extra energy mm -hmm. that the LEDs aren't using, so you get kind of a smoother flicker. Nice. Um, yeah, I don't know if we can probably take it out and see the difference. They just kind of die right away. Oh, they yeah. don't kind of and when they go out, blowing. they kind of like go do 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 Right, oh, right. Nice. Because it's almost like energy is being pulsed here because of the, the kind of motor we used. Neat. So like if we wanted to put a, a microcontroller in here or like run a sensor network self-powered, what kind of modifications do you think we'd have to make to, um, you know, really like, encapsulate a whole project powered by the wind? So one problem with 
alternative energy like this is that it's intermittent. If you have solar energy, it only works when there's no clouds in the way, or wind energy, you only get energy when it's moving. So you have to figure out a, the best way that you want to store the energy so you can use it. Because most things like microcontrollers are really picky about having a smooth current, not current that's going like this. So we can use this energy um, to charge, say, a rechargeable battery, uh -huh. and then just have an Arduino or something else running off a battery like you normally would. And there's certain com certain uh, companies make components called like charge controllers. Um, in Project 10.3, in my book, I talk about um, a charge control that we use for solar power. Mm -hmm. The same kind of thing. All it is is a little box that you can plug a, a generator or a solar power or wind power or solar panel into, you can plug in a battery, and then you can plug in your thing that you want to drive, and for you know 15 bucks, it makes it easy to use this alternative energy, store it, and then deliver it in a smooth kind so of fashion. So that's like a box of circuitry that, that like handles all of the complicated uh, electrical engineering, kind of like this, but more complicated, right? Like make yeah. sure that the power's never going backwards and, exactly. and listens for when it's charging and when it should be spending energy and that kind of stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, that seems to make it really easy. Why don't we go outside and try it out? Sounds good. So we're here on the rooftop, and there's not a ton of wind right now. Too nice of a day, I guess. Too yeah. bad. Sunny for the wind lantern. I guess it would work better at night anyway, illuminating the top of the building. That's true. We'll have to try later. Cool. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Dustin. This is great. Thanks for having me, of course. Pretty cool. Yeah, that was really fun. I was really glad she was able to stop by. So we've got it right here. Can we try it out? Yeah, go for it. Can you guys see the LEDs lighting up down here? I'll give it a good start. Oh, yeah. There you go. There we go. It's really cool. We wanted to put it outside, but yeah, it's raining. Yeah, the yeah. weather's not so great out. But I think that this is a good shape for like to hold a whole project in here, and you got it powered by the wind on top. Um, I really liked, Dustin mentioned to us that she used epoxy putty to um, join the gears that she just laser cut um, to the, um, what's, this, what's this kind of bearing called again? Oh. Um, I have it written down here. Oh, the shaft coupling. That's what this guy is attached to the gear and then epoxy putty to the laser cut gears and um, Dustin has all the files online and a make project and an instructable and like if you want to build this project everything is there for you to see and um, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Super fun. Pretty cool. Um, so we're releasing chapters from uh, Dustin's new book on Make Online. Uh, we've already released chapter one. Uh, it's the introduction to mechanisms and machines. And chapter six, I think, just went up on Monday. It's called Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Motion. So check out Dustin's book. You can see the samples on Make Online. And uh, it's a really great resource, like crazy. If you're building projects with kids, like if you're an artist and you want to make something with gears, it's, I really recommend Dustin's book. I've got a copy here. Mine's signed. <laughs> you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs>